Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I am doing a manga haul or just a haul of books in general. Um, this is a June haul. I think this is the only June haul that I'm doing. That's kind of amazing because I did so many May hauls. Um, so this is actually fairly small compared to <laughs> even though it feels like I just non-stop adding books to this collection. Um, so I did end up go shopping during the week of the manga readathon with my sister and we actually went to our local comic book shop um, and picked up a number of titles. So most of them were kind of new titles um, and they certainly were new for me and I did pick up a couple of older titles that were on their sale shelves. Um, actually ones that I have been kind of eyeing for a while so I was glad to see that they were on sale there. So I'm just going to show you all of the titles that I ended up picking up um, in June and uh, hopefully nothing else will come in the mail before then so that I can have a nice clean break between now and July when I'm sure there will be more hauls because that's what I do. In one of my recent hauls I picked up volume one of this series so I ended up picking up a couple more that they just happened to have on sale. It was amazing just to see it there because um, I believe that Del Rey uh, wasn't able to finish publishing it and uh, there isn't that much actually in print although it does continue to get printed or published in a digital version, I think, by Kodansha. So there's actually quite a lot to read, um, but not a lot in print. So I was really excited to see some of these. So I got Volume 3, Volume 4, and Volume 5. I have read Volume 1, and I really enjoyed it. I, th I found it a lot of fun. I really like the main character, or like his character type. It's basically about um, an, an ex-military man during this, um, basically, like, World War. Um, and he's part of a secret operative, and um, basically after the war now, the job of of the army is to go in and uh, try to make peace with, with all the different people. Um, and with these secret operatives, they, you know, like, are these, like, super magical, extra tough kind of characters, and so they're um, often on the wrong side of the law or often causing real problems and so he ends up joining up with kind of a Peace Corps type group and goes in and helps um, different people, sort of finds finds his place again in the world after the war and it, uh, Volume 1 was great, it reminded me a lot of, at least the feeling of it, uh, reminded me of Library Wars which is a favorite of mine so can't wait to read more of this. I ended up picking up Emerald, this is by Hiroaki Samra um, Emerald and Other Stories, you can see it's still in plastic. Um, this is a single volume of short stories, and I didn't know that. I thought this was a volume one, and I keep adding it to my card on Amazon, thinking it was volume one, and so when I saw it at the store and it was a single volume, so of course I wanted to pick it up right away. Um, so I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. Um, also, the cover implies that there are stories that of sort of a western bent and I am in the mood to read westerns so badly so um, it's a weird weird mood to be in but this one appeals to me at the moment so much so I really want to read this I don't know what it's about I don't know what the other stories are going to be about um, but it is the same author's Blade of the Immortal so it should be pretty good I'm thinking I ended up picking up Cutie Honey, A Go-Go by Go Nagai, Shinpei Ito, and Hideaki Anno. Um, all pretty big names. I've been looking forward to reading some of these Cutie Honey titles. I have a vague memory of watching an anime live action. I watched something back in the day. Um, I know this isn't technically geared towards me, and maybe it's something that I won't even really like. Oh, look, the art looks pretty clean. Um, well, lots of nudity, but um, it looks it looks very readable, um, and I'm looking forward to it. It's about a, a super heroine android, um, but obviously you can tell from the, the skimpy outfits um, what kind of fighting shenanigans happen. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually more looking forward to the classic collections that are coming out, and I am hopefully going to be ordering those or pre-ordering those very soon. Um, but some of these reboots of these classic series are, are really um, intriguing to me, so I definitely wanted to check this one out. Um, the next title you might not have heard of, this is actually a DMP title and still in plastic. This is Takasugi-san's Obento um, by Nozomi Yanahara, and I got volume 1 and volume 2. And I think that this is a uh, Yonkoma about someone who makes Obento. 
I have a knife here. Let's check it out. Oh, it's not. Uh, it's not, um... It's not Yonkoma at all. I really had it in my mind that it was, so... Um, this is basically, I think, about a young, shy, 31-year-old chef or aspiring chef. Um, his aunt passes away and now he's um, living with or in charge of his youngish niece. So uh, it says comedy romance or light romance, but I think mostly it might be more of a foodie manga. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I am going to be reading quite a bit of foodie manga this weekend. Um, so <laughs> I definitely wanted to check it out and it was on their sale table. So I was happy to pick it up on the cheap. The next title I picked up is Happiness Volume 3 by Shizu Oshimi, also in plastic. Um, actually our current bookstore I think actually puts these manga in plastic. So uh, just to protect them, which is actually I think a really nice thing and they looked pretty, pretty nice there. Um, this just fills in a gap in a collection that I had missed picking this up, and my sister's been eager to read it, so I picked it up. Uh, this is a title that has been on my most anticipated list, The Troublemakers by Baron Yoshimoto. This is a title that's translated by Ryan Holmberg, uh, Gekika work. It looks like a pretty nice title. Six of the Best Stories by Baron Yoshimoto, one of Japan, or one of the Japanese manga artists who helped develop the graphic novel form in the 60s and 70s by targeting an older audience with scintillating and exquisitely drawn stories about class, gender, ethnicity, and race, with an essay by noted manga historian and translator Ryan Holmberg. Um, the print on this is, is really quite spectacular. I don't think that's inappropriate. It's the black blacks, like thick, almost almost cardstock thick pages. There's some nudity in it. They are stories for adults, but it looked good. Yeah, that's a nice. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this one. It's gonna be good. I also picked up Slumbering Beauty by Yumi Unita. I hadn't heard of this before, but Yumi Unita is the same author as Bunny Drop. Um, and the art style is uh, distinctly like that in Bunny Drop. It's a very kind of simplified uh, forms, um, almost next to nothing in backgrounds. Um, but it's quite appealing. Um, this one is basically the story about a girl who really likes to sleep. She discovers that uh, she is sort of the bane of the existence of her uh, sleeping god or sleeping spirit who comes and uh, helps to wake her up in the morning, but she's such a terrible person at waking up. He then discovers that she's really great at helping other people fall asleep, and so kind of takes her on as his apprentice, and they kind of go around and help people to go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, it is next to no plot. I'm not sure the characters are really very deep either, um, but it's just sort of like whimsical and quiet and just like um, almost meditative and it's just sort of like quietly moving through uh, the different the different scenarios and different stories but it it's never really loud it doesn't really have a lot of conflict definitely has a very dreamy feel to it and I wonder if this wouldn't be a good thing to read before you went to sleep and um, another title that I picked up, and actually the reason that we went to the comic book store to begin with, is Volume 12 of Genshiken Second Season by Kiyoshimoku. Um, I picked this up uh, for the Margaritathon because I was going to catch up a series and I didn't have the final volume, so I wanted to catch up reading the series but also catch up buying the series, so this is now complete. I have now finished reading it. Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it as much as the original series, which is one of my absolute favorite stories ever. Um, this just doesn't hold a candle to it. Um, it's good, and if I had never read Original Genshiken, I would love this, but it's not Original Genshiken, so... Although all of those characters do make an appearance, it's just that they're not quite the same characters that they used to be, which I guess is sort of the growing up process, but still... <sighs> Sadness. I picked up the first volume of Dragon Half. It's uh, super shiny, it's got a metallic cover, um, always in the pictures it just looks like this dull gray and so um, 
the shine really helps. <laughs> helps for me. Anytime I see something kind of shiny or fluorescent, I just am instantly drawn to it. So that helped a lot. I don't particularly like this cover, and I thought for sure this is something that I'm not going to want to read. But when I picked it up at the store, because, you know, of course I'm curious about it, um, and flipped through it, this isn't too bad. There's some really pretty art pages. Um, the art in it is quite clean, although definitely of a specific era. Um, it's a super nostalgic looking series. It looks like a lot of the manga that was released in the uh, late 80s, um, especially in single issues. I have quite a few um, by like, what's the author? Jinpei Ito or something? I can't remember. Um, there's quite a lot of titles that look like this and definitely a lot of anime that I watched that look like this. This is basically the story about a half-dragon girl. Uh, it's dragon half. Her mother is a dragon and her father is a knight and she's of course half and so she's really really strong and goes out and fights and things. Um, very fantasy, epic adventure type uh, situations. Um, but she is in love with a knight who is a dragon kind of hunter and he is also a pop star. So she's in love with him and some accident happens where she accidentally kisses him in front of um, another sort of powerful character who's also in love with him and so now these two girls are basically fighting each other to win the love of this um, pop star. It's just so wacky and silly and ridiculous. There's a heck of a lot of nudity in it. Um, it is a little bit etchy at times but um, nothing where I was bothered by it. It just seems like really silly and stupid and fun. Um, I had a lot of fun reading this and I'm looking forward to volume two. What it reminded me of the most though was the Jetsons, the cartoon series. Which I don't understand at all, but I just kept having flashes of the Jetsons, particularly the daughter, Judy, I think her name is, um, a lot. It was, it was reminding me a lot of that. And uh, the way that the, the rock star or the pop star or whatever he is, is portrayed is really similar to like Hanna-Barbera characters. So that's what this reminds me of. I don't know if you have nostalgia for the series. I actually was not aware of it before, but it is nostalgic in its style and in its presentation. And uh, don't let the cover fool you. It's hilariously silly and a lot of fun. Um, I did pick up another Edio Asano title. Um, I have been saying that I probably wouldn't do that again because um, He's not necessarily on my good side at the moment, but I am still very curious about everything that he writes. And this has been on my kind of most anticipated, most curious to read list. This is Dead Dead Demons Da 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 Destruction, uh, Volume 1. And it's a smaller book than his other publications. Um, I don't know how long the series is, but the art in it is, is really nice. He's just got a, a really great artistic style, artistic flair. Um, I think it's about an alien ship that is sitting over top of a, a certain town or um, sitting over the world and they don't really know what the ship is is doing and then a bunch of kids coming of age which I think is sort of the main theme of most of his works. Um, I don't know about this. I've heard really good things from a lot of people um, and I have been told by a number of people that this title will change my mind on Inio Asano so I'm giving it a try and regardless I like his art. Um, as a comic book creator, I respect his work. Uh, it's just not always for me, which is fine. Um, so anyway, I am picking up this title, and that's um, all I ended up picking up at the comic book store. But I do have another title. So I do have another title, and it also from Asano, and it's this little pamphlet or single chapter of Solon in an epilogue. Um, and this was published, or exclusively published, for the Toronto Comic Arts Festival. Um, so it's just a little extra story um, that goes along with Solonin, which you know I haven't read yet. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want to miss out on something like this, especially if I do end up loving Solonin, and I, I definitely want to make sure that I have this in my collection. So um, I ended up picking this up actually from the TCAF website. Um, they may or may not still have copies, but you should definitely go and check that out if this is something that you're interested in picking up. I also picked up two other things from their website just because it was there 
and I wanted to look and see what it looked like. And I think these are kind of programs, but basically I think they're just sort of like little art collections of some of their big artists who are visiting for the uh, convention. This one, I don't even know what year it's for. Um, but at any rate, uh, this is one of them. And you can see that uh, Taiyo Matsumoto uh, is the cover art for this. Um, I think it's really similar to cover art he was doing for the Hobonichi, so maybe it was the same year as that. Um, but a lot of just sort of like full cover color spreads by a number of visiting artists. So uh, that one might be a little too naked. Uh, but yeah, I just thought it would be kind of interesting to look at. If I didn't like it, I was just going to kind of cut it up and use it for my crafting. Um, but I might just keep it as is because it is quite a nice looking pamphlet. And I picked up a second one. Um, this was the only other one that was available, and I don't even really know what years these are. I think this might be year 10, but I can't really tell. And it's got uh, Tatsumi, I think, art here on the back, so uh, just a number of different... I think that's Tatsumi. It's just like single page spreads of artists illustrating a TCAF, or just uh, individual, indi individual art. Chi from Chi Sweet Home. So yeah, I just thought it would be kind of a neat little thing to check out. Didn't really know what I was getting into and probably way overspent for something that really should have just been a handout for people who went to the event, which I didn't. Um, at any rate, that's everything that I got for the month of June. A substantially smaller haul for once, and I'm very happy about that. Hopefully that will last for a while, but I'm not so sure. At any rate, if you've read any of these titles, I would love to know what your thoughts were about them. Um, if you liked any of these titles and think that I should get to them sooner than others, I would love to know that as well. Uh, let me know what titles you've been buying recently, and um, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.